the case that the Sherry Jo Bates murder is the work of Zodiac. Roman numeral one, the footprints. Roman numeral two, the heavyset man. Roman numeral three, the letters. Roman numeral four, the desktop poem. The footprints. This is the statement from the Riverside Police to the Napa Sheriff. Physical evidence found at the scene of our crime indicated that heel prints found near the body were made by a heel that was manufactured for military and other government agencies, including prisons. This is from Robert Graysmith's book, Zodiac, Chapter 11, Sherry Jo Bates. This is a quote from the Riverside Police. We found a shoe print of a type of shoe sold only in military outlets, such as nearby March Air Force Base. It was size 8 to 10 and produced by Leavenworth Prisoners. This is a shoe print found at Lake Berryessa of a men's size 10 and a half. The number 26 up there on the top stands for how many lines on the top part of the shoe and the 10 down by the heel is how many lines there are down there. Napa Sheriff detectives spent a great deal of time investigating the shoe prints and what kind of shoes. And they went to Travis Air Force Base and asked questions there. The shoe prints lead me to the conclusion that the murder of Sherry Jo Bates was the Zodiac Killer. The murders were nearly three years apart, so it is possible they are not the exact same shoe. Furthermore, both detective agencies independently investigated their local U.S. Air Force Base because they believed that the shoes were sold at a military base and the shoe sizes are close between size 8 and 10 in Riverside and 10 and a half at Lake Berryessa. The Heavyset Man Two weeks after the murder of Sherry Jo Bates, the police did a reenactment with 65 people participating. Captain Cross announced that police were seeking a heavyset man with a beard as a result of the reenactment. The man had been placed in the library by witnesses the night of the murder, but had failed to appear for the reenactment. Brian Hartnell stated that the assailant was wearing a black ceremonial type hood, square on top, and appeared to be heavy set, between 200 and 250 pounds. He thought the suspect was possibly 20 to 30 years of age, and stated suspect was between 5 foot 8 and 6 foot, 225 to 250 pounds, dark brown hair, eyes unknown, sloppy dresser, stomach hanging over trousers. In the late 1960s and in the 70s, there weren't a lot of people. It was uncommon to be heavyset at that young of an age. So both investigations, again independently, were looking for a gentleman that was heavy set. The letters. At first looking at this, I was kind of happy that uh, they're all capital letters. But now looking at it over a length of time, there's not a lot of uh, different letters. There's a lot of letters that repeat. And also you can see that he wrote over top the letters several times. So all I have is this M. To me that M looks a little unusual because the middle part doesn't come down very far. 
And if you look at the Zodiac Cipher, the two M's, they look similar to me, to that M. And they both don't come down very far in the center. The problem is, there's really no good letters to use that are written on the envelope to compare to Zodiac's writings. And then I forgot to even go into the confession letter that's all typed and it was mailed to the press enterprise and the police. The desktop poem. Well, the desktop writing is kind of sloppy because it's written into a desk and we don't know what the top of the desk was like, if it was flat or rough and if it's hard to, because of the grain, hard to write into the desk. And then on this uh, card, you can see that the Zodiac Killer wrote very neatly, but yet I think there are similarities. So, in my opinion, the E, the A, and the O's do look similar, even though they're not exactly the same. But I would not be shocked if the same person wrote both of these items. In conclusion, I do think that the murder of Sherry Jo Bates is the Zodiac Killer. And the desktop is probably the least um, conclusive. But the desktop is very confusing to me on many levels because was it written before the murder that night or was it written after? And then how did the person manage to do that? They would, to me, it would seem they'd almost have to work at the RCC library. Well, this ends this episode of Unsolved. And in the next episode, we're going to look more into suspects and details of the Sherry Joe Bates murder. See you the next time.